class, this is a final recap of Chapter 3. I'm going to finish up with preparing some statements. But before we get there, I want to make sure we know where we are at in the accounting cycle. This cycle is presented to us in Chapter 3. It's the 10 steps of accounting. Once we end, we start again, hence why it's called a cycle. We began when we studied accounting with analyzing transactions. What's given, what's received, what are the type of accounts that we are dealing with. Then we went into general journals, and that's where the debits and credits and the journals, we actually recorded those at that step. Then we moved into the ledgers, where we transferred those journal entries into their individual ledger accounts. Then, in the last chapter, we saw an unadjusted trial balance, meaning we looked at every account and listed its balance, and then found the total debits and total credits from every account and made sure that they matched. Here we are in step five in this chapter. We, we learned about our accruals and our deferrals, and sometimes we have to make adjustments to accounts because the timing between cash and the revenues and expenses is off. After we make some of those adjustments, we'll again do a trial balance just to make sure that our debits and credits still match, and so we can list all the balances of our accounts. It's only then in step seven that we can prepare statements, and statements are probably the most important part of this accounting cycle because that's actually where the communication is made to those users of accounting. So if a manager wants to know how much revenue was made this year, he's probably going to want to ask for a statement. Or if an investor wants to know how many assets a company has, they're going to ask for a statement. The next step would be to close our revenue in our expense accounts because we want to start over every period. So if we want to start over each year or each quarter, then we would close those out and start over. Then another trial balance is needed just to make sure our debits and our credits still match and we can see the balance for every account. And if needed, we can do some reversing of accounts for some accruals that we set up. But let's go back and just focus on step seven for right now. I've opened my textbook to a problem. This is problem 3-5B in the text and I am going to look at an adjusted trial balance meaning adjustments have already been made for speedy courier as of December 31st 2015 so a trial balance this is just listing all the accounts and their balances whether they're debits or credits and then matching that the total debits match the total credits for this problem it tells us to use the information in the adjusted trial balance to prepare an income statement, a statement of retained earnings, and a balance sheet. And it also wants to know what the profit margin is for 2015. Okay, so I'm going to bring in a form I'm going to use to make an income statement to begin with. And so when you're doing this in Connect, You'll have a form that looks like this also, but you're going to be expected to fill in the information. We have three main statements we've been asked to do. Again, the beginning, the first one is the income statement. The income statement always comes first. In the order of a financial statement, the income statement always comes first. We need to know the income, net income, to be able to complete the other statements. On every statement, we always want to have three lines, the who, the what, and the when. This income statement is for Speedy Courier, and that's what it told us in our, in our case here. This is Speedy Courier. And this is the income statement. So this is the telling us the what. So again, we have a who, a what, and a when. So we have Speedy Courier, the income statement, and this is for the year ending December 31st. The income statement is for a period of time. So this is going to cover the entire year, an entire period of time. So the income statement is actually pretty easy. We're going to list all of our revenues, list all of our expenses, 
and find the difference between the two. Revenues less expenses gives us net income. I will go back to the trial balance and I will look for my revenues. Here they are. Delivery fees earned and interest earned. You'll have to know the definition of a revenue so you know where to find it in the trial balance. You'll sum your two revenue accounts, or if you have more than that or less than that, whatever revenue you have, you'll sum them up and do a total. Notice that this is not the debit and the credit column. We have no debits and credits here. This is just used for a subtotal. So we're going to add the first column together, the first lines in the first column, and put the total in the right column. The next thing we're going to do is list out all of our expenses. Go back to your trial balance and find your expenses. Now note, we want expenses, not prepaid expenses. Those are assets. We want true expenses. They're usually found at the bottom of the trial balance and list all of those out. All right, I've listed all my expenses and their current balances as found on the trial balance. And I've subtotaled them here on the right side. Now, net income is the last line item we need to put. Net income is the total revenues less expenses. Revenues minus expenses gives us net income. Revenues minus the expenses. Now, do you see how nice and neat that would be to give to somebody? Someone says, can you tell us the net income from the business this year? And you say, sure, here's the statement. This is the income statement. This tells who the business is, when the time period was, list all the revenues and all the expenses, and nice and neat at the very bottom gives the net income. The next statement I'm going to do is the statement of retained earnings. And the reason we do this one, this is the second statement. The reason we do this one second is because we need the net income from the prior statement to complete this one. So remember, we always have a who, a what, and a when. Same business, we're still talking about our company, the Speedy Carrier. Sorry, Speedy Courier. Speedy Courier, this is the statement of retained earnings, and this is for the year that ends December 31st, 15. Again, notice this is for a year. This is an entire time frame, not one date. For the year. Statement of retained earnings is very basic. Um, the nature of it, the whole word, earnings that are retained, means we're going to add in our net income and take out what the owners decided to withdraw to give us a new earnings that are retained. So let's start off with our retained earnings in the beginning. Go back to your trial balance, find your retained earnings. There it is, retained earnings. Now we're going to add to it, add the net income. We solve for the net income on the income statement, $86,000. Now we can do a subtotal, the retained earnings plus the new earnings, the new net income, add together less any dividends. Dividends. Where do I find the dividends? There they are, 50000 Dividends are the stockholders withdraw from the company. So the business was profitable this year. They made $86,000 and the stockholders received a payout of $50,000 of that income. That's their withdrawal of the earnings. So the new retained earnings is our subtotal less the dividends taken out.
our new retained earnings, the earnings that are retained, is $146,000. All right, and then the third statement we're going to do is the balance sheet. Again, we need to have the who, the what, and the when at the top. This is for Speedy Courier. This is their balance sheet, and this is for a date and time. This is December 31st. This is different than the last two that we saw, where it was for the year, for a time period. This is the income statement. We want one date and time because we're going to list the balances for some of our accounts, and we call these actually permanent accounts. If you look over this, you can see that we're going to list our assets, our liabilities and our equity. This form fills out the basic accounting equation. Assets equals liabilities plus equity. We're going to list all the accounts for each one of those categories and their balances and make sure that they, this equation actually balances. So we go back to our trial balance, we find our assets, and we list them here on our balance sheet beginning with assets. I went through my trial balance and I found each asset account and listed its balance. I want to point out two very special types of accounts you see here. The accumulated depreciation accounts. Now accumulated depreciation is something we'll hear about a lot in the future. It is the amount of depreciation or value that has decreased and it is accumulated towards our assets and we keep track of those separately. For example, equipment. The equipment account began with $270,000. Over time, the value has decreased due to wear and tear and age, $200,000, hence why it's in brackets. So its true value right now, book value, is $70,000. The difference between the original cost and how much of the depreciation has accumulated. Now notice how I put these in special column first because I wanted to show the subtotal on the right. There's no debits and credits, no debits and credits. These columns are used to help us do subtotaling. So now I have all of my assets listed and their balances. I'll put the total asset amount here. Next, I'll list all my liabilities. Those are easy to see because they say payable or our unearned revenue or delivery fees. I went back through my trial balance and I found all of my liabilities. And I listed their balances. I'll put the subtotal down here, total liabilities. And last, I will list my equity accounts. I only have two, common stock and retained earnings. When it comes time for the retained earnings, we need to go back to the retained earnings, the one we did just before, to find the new retained earnings. That amount is what we'll add into our balance sheet. So the common stock plus the retained earnings, our new retained earnings, gives us a new equity amount. <clears throat> Added together the common stock and the retained earnings to get the total equity. Now, the total liabilities plus the total equity. Total liabilities plus the total equity <clears throat> gives us a new balance combined is $663,000. Notice that's the same thing we got for our total assets. Our total assets equals the sum of our total liabilities and equity. 